Hi, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. I was busy making the supply list, and I think that um, my timer wasn't working correctly. Let me know if you guys have any issues hearing and seeing me. We've got front-facing camera this week. Yay! Um, I am hopefully streaming to YouTube and Facebook and to our Pick a Fence Studios Facebook group. I'm not sure because I'm sure lots of you noticed there is um, an outage and things are down this morning and Facebook wasn't working, Instagram wasn't working. So hopefully if you uh, normally watch over on Facebook, you have navigated over here and found me on YouTube. If you guys don't know me, my name is Charlene. I am on the design team here at Pick a Fence Studios. I go live every Tuesday at noon. I see noon central. I see we have uh, Rebecca's here. Rebecca's here. Hi, Rebecca. Kathy. Hi, Kathy. And um, Lisbeth. Hi. Hello from California. Your first live. Welcome. Welcome. Today we're going to be doing some fun stuff with the latest release. Good morning, Yvette. Yay! Everybody's rolling in. So some really cute stuff um hopefully i'm gonna switch you guys down to my desk top here and so i have already we're gonna be doing a little bit of toner boiling so i have my um, mini mink here heating up hopefully that wasn't too loud i thought i had set it at three already but i didn't so I don't know how familiar you are with toner foiling. Uh, it is really easy to do and Picket Fence has lots of fun toner foiling products. I'm just gonna show you a little bit today, but you wanna have some kind of um, laminator or some type of machine like a mini mink or a fuse. Um, any of those will work for toner foiling. Now, I'm not sure if you guys can see it on camera or not. My lights might be flickering a little bit. Uh, being that I go live and uh, do a lot of recording, I have about a million things plugged in in my craft room. And the these do pull a lot of power because uh, they heat up nice and hot inside. And so my... Um, lights tend to flicker just just barely when this guy's on so hopefully that doesn't pick up on the camera all right so what we're going to use today we're going to create a very cute little spring timey card uh, pick up in studios carries these toner card fronts and these are super super easy to use great for just fun foiling um, doesn't have to be super like involved or anything like that and each pack of these and they're pretty inexpensive in each pack of these there's two of six different designs and uh, this month I think there was three different packs that came out um, oh good my mink told me we are all nice and heated up this month there is two bee themed ones and one butterfly themed one but we're going to use this one it's called the bee's knees and so you can see these are the six different designs in this pack if i can get my fingers to work very cute this little honeycomb geometric design and we also have a background stamp this month that is the same as this, which is fun. And then, where's the other one? I already used one of them, so okay. So, and then this one, which is super cute with these little bees and flowers and everything. I did a test run with it last night when I was trying to think of what I wanted to do for my card. So I've already used that design. I really like this one too. These cute little bees flying all over. So there is all kinds of fun bee and butterfly and springtime related stuff in the February release. If you have any questions about what I'm using today, 
throw it down in the comments. And also there is a supply list pinned to the top of the live chat. And then there's also a supply list in the video description. And I promise I will get to card making really quick. I just want to give everyone the heads up about what I'm using. Yeah, Rebecca, social media is super weird today. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the Wreath Building Greetings from Our Hive set. Super cute. These little adorable bee-related or bee-themed stamps. These are great for creating wreaths or you could use them to create a little scene on your card. I'm gonna be using this, this sentiment here, my little honey. This one's cute too, greetings from our hive. But you can see we've got little things of honey and honey dippers and bees buzzing around um, and different sized little homes for the bees and all kinds of cute stuff. And then you've got different words you can use to combine to make your own sentiment. And then lastly, we're going to use today, well, not lastly, but of the main products, we're going to use the Happy Bumblebee Family die set. So there is a big uh, bee, there's a medium sized bee, and two smaller bees. Um, and these you can create like a little happy bee family with whoever you want in your family, I suppose. I'm just gonna use one of the bees today. I'm gonna use the, the medium-sized bee here. All right, whenever you are toner foiling, a couple of things. Good morning, Arlet. Good morning, Melissa, welcome. Oh, from Nova Scotia, nice. Uh, a couple of things, you wanna make sure that whatever you're using to apply your toner foil to your toner cardstock is hot. You want to make sure it's been it's turned on, that it's been sitting there for a minute or two because what happens is the heat from whatever you're using, it heats up the toner and it causes it to bond with the foil. So if it's not hot enough, you're going to have issues. It's also not going to work really well if it's too hot. A good setting is three on the mini mink to use. A couple other things that could impact your toner foiling is that you could get dust or um, little things on your paper. You also could get it onto your foil and those things are going to block the foil from attaching and bonding with the toner. Now this toner foil here, this is yellow or honey yellow that I'm going to be using. Very pretty, a, a prismatic kind of yellowish gold color. Um, hopefully that's, I don't know if it's doing it justice on camera, but it's very pretty. The way that toner foil works is there is a clear plastic top carrier sheet and then the foil is bonded to that sheet and that foil, the not pretty side, I guess, um, or this, the side that is on the inside, is what is going to bond to the toner, okay? So I like to use, I'm gonna move this up a little. Hi, Beverly. It is cold here in Washington, you guys, and where I am anyway. I am, I am not loving the cold weather at all. I'm ready for spring. So let's make a nice warm card. I like to use a sliding trimmer to cut my foil, but you could also cut it with scissors. I like the nice little clean cut that you get from using a sliding trimmer. And I'm gonna cut it just slightly larger than an A2 size card. So just slightly larger than the card panel. Oops, and it got stuck on there. Set this aside and then you can use one of two things, either use a soft bristle brush or you can use a Swiffer and you want to use that to make sure you get any dust, hair, whatever might be hanging out in your craft room like my dog and all of his fur that goes everywhere. You want to get it off your paper and off of the 
side of your foil that's going to be adhering to your paper. Okay. And a Swiffer does, some people like it better than the brush. I can never seem to remember to keep a, a Swiffer in my craft room for some reason. So either works just as well. Personally, in my experience, you might have better luck depending on your machine because largely how things to um, foil is going to depend on what machine you're using. So a regular laminator in general doesn't do quite as good of a job as one of these kind of like specialty machines like a mini mink because a regular laminator um, doesn't heat up quite the same internally. It has to do with the number of rollers that are inside. Okay, this is a carrier sheet. You can use a carrier sheet or you can use parchment paper. Um, I prefer to use a carrier sheet and these come with the machine and they last like forever, at least in my experience. So I've been using this same carrier sheet that came with my machine for ages. I think there might actually be another one in the box. I don't remember now at this point because I've never needed it. Okay, when you put this in your carrier sheet, you wanna make sure to hang on to it because that foil is going to want to stick to the top of the carrier sheet. You see it moving around? You might not be able to, but it's trying to like jump up onto that top part. But I'm gonna hold this down so that way when it goes in there, it stays in the right spot. See how it sticks? And my sheet got rotated, there we go. Then I just like to smooth it out before I stick it through. And then we can just pass it right through. You do wanna put the side that has the seam, so where the fold is, that's where you wanna put through. And then it's kind of satisfying to watch it just pull through. I don't know, that's my favorite part probably. Doggy glitter, oh my gosh, yes. It's not fair, it's doggy glitter. I love that, Kathy, that's hilarious. Hi, Yvette, yay. So, so many friends here this morning, yay. Okay, this takes a minute. I'm gonna take a drink of coffee while I'm waiting. Mm. Look at my cool coffee cup, it's got a little like charger thing. So I actually bought this for my husband for his birthday. You, real quick, you wanna look this cool completely. So while we're waiting, I'll tell you the coffee cup story. I bought it for him for his birthday, I don't know, I think two years ago, or maybe it was Christmas. I don't know, they all run together. But he's been he's used it that whole time. And the other day, I walk in the kitchen and he's using one that's the color black and I'm like, what, where did that come from? He's like, oh, I got the new version. And I was like, what? Well, I guess my present to you is now my present to me. So now I get to use his, his old one. And I have a lovely little coffee cup with charger on my desk. Okay, you wanna let it cool completely because you don't, if, if you peel it right after it comes out of there, that, that foil, has not fully bonded yet. That's where you're gonna get a lot of um, little missing spots of foil everywhere. So here we go, you just peel it back. And look at our pretty little bees. Yay! They're so pretty in real life. I love, love, love the effect of foiling. It's so fun. So now you have this negative that you could use with some, if you have toner cardstock and Picket Fence sells some really fun, here you can kind of see it better, um, toner cardstock on their site. So you could hang on to that and use it. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna turn this off, uh, cause I'm just gonna do the one today, but what I recommend doing is if you are doing any um, 
toner foiling is just have fun with it. Like you could make like four or five different fun backgrounds in a day and just play with the foil. There's they're so inexpensive to that it's just fun to play with and it's magical to peel off that toner foil sheet. And you see what I'm talking about with it being a carrier sheet. So look, that that's clear plastic. That's what's holding onto the foil that's bonded to it. Now, something fun. These cardstock sheets are very smooth. They are fantastic for ink blending. And foil will act as a, re a resist to your ink blending. So we're gonna do an ink blended panel right over this and then we'll still have all the gorgeous, beautiful shine from the foil at the end. So I've got three colors of kind of honeyish yellow bee colors, I feel like. That's what that's what I envisioned in my head anyway. And I'm just gonna grab a paper towel here and grab my yellow blending brush. And we're gonna start with our lightest color and get some on our brush here. Tap off, I always, I kind of like work my brush on the glass mat and that's just to work that ink into the brush so that I don't get any splotching. Most of the time when you get big splotches when you're ink blending, it's because you have a bunch of ink just deposited in one area of your brush and it goes down on your paper and then it wants to live there forever happily ever after, but not so happy for your card. When you are ink blending, the goal is to get some ink on the paper at first. And the reason is because once you get ink on the paper, you're gonna also um, be able to build it up much more easily. If I tried to put a really heavy coat of this ink down right now, it would not come out as even and it would get blotchy and I'd have lots of issues. So that's a nice first light coat. Next we'll go into our medium colored yellow. Rebecca, it's making you want to save up and buy a foiling system. They're so fun. I love foiling and it's just like I will say if you have never done foiling before, toner foiling is easier than hot foiling. And those are two different things. They're two different kinds of foil, two completely different systems. Um, hot foiling is a little bit more finicky and a little bit um, more expensive to get started, frankly because the you have to get the machine and the plates are very uh, pricey. Now they're gorgeous, they do beautiful things and you can also foil with your regular dies um, and you can uh, cut out the foil with your dies. I, ha I have a video over on my channel that talks about that and use it. But certainly toner foiling is the way to go if you are you know, not looking to um, really invest because with toner foiling, you can pick up fun little sheets like this. If you have a toner printer, you can print out whatever you want essentially and foil uh, over it. All right, this is kind of more of a brownish yellow that I'm bringing in. You can see I've moved my grip back a little bit. The farther back you're holding your blending brush, the lighter, the less pressure that is on the head of the blending brush. So it's it's not going to be pushing down as hard. Again, that helps with avoiding any splotching. So because this is a dark color, I wanted to make sure that that wasn't an issue at all. 
All right, there's our first coat of the three colors. And now we're gonna go back and do a second coat. Yeah, Rebecca, like I, I've, I don't own a toner printer myself either. Um, mostly because the, uh, the, the designs and sheets you can get for the toner foiling sheets, they're, they're so easy to pick up and then you don't even have to worry about it. Plus they're already cut to size. Plus it's a nice cardstock for ink blending on. So it's kind of a, a win-win all around, but I know some people like to have that ability to customize and it's really important to them. So now that I have that first layer of ink on, you can see I no longer have to go in from the edge because it's really going to go on to the paper much easier. And I'm just adding a little bit on my brush each time. You don't have to load up your brush with ink. You can just add a little bit at a time. It also saves on your ink, frankly, because then I'm not having to wipe off a bunch of ink from my brush as I change colors. So we've got some nice coverage up there now. I'll bring in that medium bright yellow again. See, most of mine is, my ink is going on my paper. There's very little on here that I am rubbing off in between. What is everybody up to? Does anybody have any fun plans for the day? No, it's Tuesday. I do not. Well, apart from hanging out with you guys live, which is probably the funnest part of my day, uh, I don't have any other plans. Just work, making some videos, and um, getting my kiddos and doing kiddo stuff. It's, a, it's the middle of the week. I was hoping this last weekend I wanted to go to uh, the Chihuly I think that's how you pronounce it. I, I can never remember. Um, glass gardens here in Washington, but it was so cold. If you guys know, or you know, I don't like the cold. I'm from Colorado, never liked the cold. Spent my whole life cold in Colorado. It's not quite as cold here where I live near Seattle, uh, but it's still, still too cold for my personal preference. <laughs> I'm very jealous of, of some of the ladies in the chat that I know are in California. You guys are nice and warm. And back for our final color. Arlette, you're pretending to work? Perfect. That is, that's the way to spend your Tuesday. Hanging out with me. All right, get it a little bit darker here on the bottom. And I'm actually going to bring that yellow middle color, um, medium color, the, my mid-tone, I guess, is said, essentially. I'm going to get some more of it, and I'm going to bring it down into the bottom here because I want that to be a little bit more orangey colored. Oop, that happens to me sometimes. My little my little clippies get excited and they <laughs> they pop off. I keep waiting for it to just like pop up and hit me in the face one of these days. Alright, we're gonna bring this in here. Because I want that to be a little bit more orange. Looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? Looks like a nice blend. 
yeah there we go three little colors so let me put these away before I stick my fat fingers in them I know Yvette born and raised in San Diego blah blah <laughs> I'm just going to show up on your doorstep one of these days, Yvette. Kathy, you miss the seasons in Washington. Yeah, it is nice having seasons. And I will say Colorado had seasons too. But I really want just like one week of winter. Can, can we make that happen somehow? We can have a little bit longer all the other three seasons and just one week of winter. That, that sounds perfect to me. All right, let me let me clean up my my glass mat here. Oh, good, you bet. I'll be there soon. <laughs> Our let it's cold in uh, Oregon. Let's see, sixty-five degrees is freezing. Exactly. I know that it was mm, yesterday when I took my son to the bus stop wasn't quite as bad today, but yesterday it was 34 degrees out and I was like, uh-uh, no way. I showed up at the bus stop wearing like a parka. <laughs> my, my poor little, my poor little body does not like the cold. Okay, I've got a, this is actually from a um, mop, <laughs> but it's a microfiber. And I keep it in my craft room and I use it anytime I need to get um, anti-static powder off of my embossing or if I've done a resist technique and I need to get the ink off of there and I just lightly rub it over the top. It's gonna get any of that ink that is sitting on top of the foil and it'll bring back even more shine. Okay, so we have got some really fantastic shine here. Doesn't that look great? With our blended coloring. I'm gonna blind you guys. Okay, let's set this aside. Next, I just chipped my nail. Darn it. Um, thank you, Yvette. Mmm. So they're new, yeah. I know exactly where you're talking about, Yvette. All right, we've got two Yvettes, guys. And I'm actually friends with both of those Yvettes, which sometimes can make it a little bit confusing when we're all talking um, at the same time. <laughs> Next, we are going to take our little bee family here. You're so cute. We'll take this little medium size bee. I imagine this is probably meant to be like the daddy bee, the mommy bee, and the kid bees, but you know, you could do with it whatever you want to. I thought this was a good size for what I was planning to do. So we're gonna cut this out in black cardstock. Let me get some, oh, I don't have a small sheet. Let me cut off a piece of this. Hold on a second. I haven't run away. I'm just cutting this down. Uh, okay. There we go. So we'll bring in my die cutting machine. I work with a Spellbinders Platinum 6, which is a manual die cutting machine, but you can use whatever you have these dies. And I'm gonna cut out three of this little bee here. Two. 
came up with the die. Get my, oh, get my pokey tool here and poke out all of this, make a mess. to make too much of a mess. Get our little crappy pieces off there. I use the edge of my cardstock to do that. I don't know if you guys do that. It makes it easier. And now we've got couple of cool little happy bees here. Yeah, Beverly, they're super cute little bees. Making a mess is half the fun. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind making a mess with like colors, uh, with, you know, my inks and, and getting in there and whether I'm using um, inks for blending or alcohol inks or watercolors or whatever. But all of the little bits of paper drive me bonkers, you guys. Like, they they just, I don't know, something about it drives me completely bonkers. So I always, when I die cut anything out, I, um, I will clean up the little bits of paper before I do anything else. <laughs> And, you know, we've all got our things, right? I don't know why this one didn't cut as well. It cut just fine on the other times. Probably where I stuck it on my mat. It is really time for me to get a new magic mat, I think, finally. I've had that one for quite a while, and it is starting to... Um, it's just so flattened that I think it, it's it's having trouble being thick enough for my die cutting. Where's my other bee? Oh, well, there it is. Come here, little bee. Come on. Come out of your paper. Gotta be, these little guys are kind of delicate, so you want to be a little careful at least with those. And there's a little heart. I don't know if you saw that, which is very sweet. Little bee heart. My youngest, as I've always called him, my, um, my little bug. He's my buggy. So anything insect or bug related or anything like that is always makes me think of him. I'm sure that's kind of common for people to call, you know, cause love bugs and stuff like that. You don't mind the paper, but you don't like the inky hands. I don't know. Isn't that so fun? Like so weird. Oh, bye Yvette. Thanks for hanging out. The other Yvette. Now we just have one viewer. Okay, we're gonna layer these up. Let me grab my glue. And... My tweezers here. They make it a little bit easier to do this because I kind of hold the die cut while I'm adding the glue. Now, this is a pretty th 
has pretty thin lines, so it can be a little bit more tricky to layer up. You could put some glue out on a nonstick mat and kind of run your die cut through it. You could cut this with double-sided adhesive on the back if you wanted to. Uh, you also could just tap it off onto a tissue. Or if you're like me, you could do none of those things and just deal with any glue that smushes out. Um, I kind of get, it's not too bad because the, anyone, I think this is the prettiest one. Put that one on top. Uh, I kind of put the glue on and then kind of take the tip, stop squeezing at all and rub it like this. And so not so much glue gets on there. It's not really that big of a deal and it doesn't smoosh out. And then any spots, if I do get any little spots, like I'll show you. You see right there? I don't know if it's focusing. There's a little bit of glue squishing out. I just take my pokey tool and just kind of rub over it and that takes care of it. No issue. Then you don't have any globby glue. So we'll layer our next one. And this is optional. I really like to layer day, uh, die cuts, especially if they are gonna be, if I only have a few on my card, because then I feel like it gives it, it just gives them more substance and um, dimension on the card. Because you wouldn't want to pop something like this up with foam tape unless you had the whole thing backed with another piece of paper, which you can do. We're going to do some of that, but it's not going to be solid paper. You'll see what I mean in just a second here. So I don't want to use any foam tape on it. Or maybe, I, no, I was about to say maybe I'll make it even more dimensional. But no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna use any foam tape on this one. Because I think I might give this card away in the live. What do you guys think? Would you guys like it if I gave uh, away the cards and, and that I make during the lives? I know there's other people that do that on YouTube and I could um, mail the card to somebody if that was something you guys were interested in, I would consider continuing to do it going forward. Kathy, you've used press and seal on the back of intricate dice after running through. Yeah, uh-huh, that does work. Okay, all right, Kathy says yes. She, and so does Rebecca. Okay, and Arlette, all right. I'm gonna give away my card I make at the end of the live today. So stick around and I'll be picking from the comments. So you guys that are out there watching but not talking, feel free to comment and say hello if you're interested in getting my card. Okay, we've got our little bee. So sweet. And then I have a couple of things here. We're going to, where's that piece? Oh, piece of scrap paper. I don't know where it went. We'll get a new one. We're going to take the, no, nope, the medium yellow. And we're going to blend a little bit on a scrap piece right here doesn't need to be fancy because this is going to go but right behind our little bottom part of our bee. Okay. So this will See that? It's going to stick out back behind our little bee down there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a pencil. 
this is the way, this is what I have found to be the easiest way to do this. If you guys know of what you think are, is an easier way, let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to see what people are doing. But whenever I'm wanting to just cut a little piece to fit behind my die cut, I'll just put it right over and trace it with a pencil. Now I know I can cut to the inside of that line, just inside of it, and it should fit perfectly back behind my little bottom of my bee. And it obviously doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to make sure you don't cut too far in. You also could do this, you could glue it on and then cut. But I find that I tend to mess up my die cut when I do that. So I prefer to do it this way. So this should fit right behind our little bee. Yeah, might need to be trimmed just slightly over here. There. So we'll put some glue back behind here. Oh, thank you, Beverly. And just tiniest little bit of glue. Again, you can always dab this off on a tissue or paper towel if you get too much glue on there. And we'll apply our little piece. We just want to make sure that it there you can see the black all the way around it. So that way. And I didn't quite get it up there. So I've got a little bit of yellow peeking through on the top, but that's okay. I'm just gonna come in and trim this off so it doesn't show. There, doesn't that look cool? Our little bee, it's got a little bee butt. Bee butt. Now for our Heart. I thought the easiest way to do this would just be to use a hole punch uh, and get a little circle, just like so, rather than trying to cut something that small. Now I can add my glue right around the little heart area. And stick it down right over that little red piece. And now we have a little red heart behind our little bee. And I still can see a little bit of that yellow. So I'm sorry guys, I'm a bit of a perfectionist if you didn't know. As many of you do know, I can spend 15 minutes off camera and <laughs> arranging my sequins only for them to end up in the same spot <laughs> that I initially thought I put them. But that's, um, we're not going to tell anybody that. Right guys? And now we're going to do our wings. What did I do with my pencil? Here it is. So again, we're just going to trace right around there. I've just got some inexpensive vellum here from my stash. I think I got this at a big pack of this at Michael's like ages ago. This is the vellum I usually use if I'm not needing something thick or that's heat embossable. This is just very, very basic thin vellum. You don't want to use something like that and try and heat emboss on it. It will melt. We'll cut this out. Thanks, Stefan. 
and again cutting to the inside right because we want it to make sure that it goes and you can't see it behind the black outline of the V. So trim, trim, trim. And there we go. Let's see how we did. we did pretty good. There's a little spot down here where it's not trimmed enough, but I think that's good. Okay, let's add some glue in the back here. And I'm not worried about gluing it everywhere back here. It just needs to have enough glue and then in the center and then have glue around the edges that it's not going to fall off. It doesn't have to be, I'm not going to glue all those little lines in there. Ooh, instead I'm just gonna drop my die cut. Okay, and there we go. So adding that little bit, those three little pieces, right? Didn't take very long. And look at what it did for our bee. Isn't that pretty? got the translucent wings there and the little yellow bee bum and our red heart. Okay, now we can put our card together. So we're gonna have our little bee. We have our panel. We have our card front or card base, I mean. And I've got a little piece of white cardstock and some black cardstock. Now this white cardstock I pre-cut, it is cut to two and one quarter inches by five and a half inches. And this is gonna go on this side of our card, like so. Now if you wanted to, um, you could cut this and save this other portion and use it on another card as well. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this directly on there. So I'm gonna add, oh wait, no, I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna do it. Okay, sorry guys, I was thinking, I'm gonna stamp my sentiment, but I can do that once it's on there too. So we're just gonna put this right along here. I know some of you are going, ah, how can you cover up that foiled piece? Stop, don't do it. It'll be okay guys, I promise. I make so much, I really don't stress out about stuff like that. I make so many cards that um, I just like to have fun and put stuff on there and move on. I'm gonna smooth this out. Ah, speaking of Rebecca in the chat, I'll show you guys something she does that is brilliant. She uses a roller to make sure all that glue under there gets smoothed out. Isn't that fancy? Now we are going to cut a very thin strip of this black cardstock. We're gonna cut about, so this is right now two and, uh, what is that, three eighths. And so I'm gonna move it over so I can cut a one eighth strip. I feel like this side is not quite as straight, so I'm gonna do this. Flip it around. That feels big to me. No, that's 
about an eighth of an inch. Okay. All right. So we're gonna put that on our card. You could make it, I might make an even smaller one. We'll see. See what I think here. Because our little bee is gonna go on here. I think this black strip, I think I want it to actually be even thinner. I think I want it to be like a sixteenth of an inch so that it doesn't overwhelm our, our very delicate little bee. Oh, sorry guys. I'm sorry. I ran into the microphone with the paper cutter. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. There, so this is gonna be, I think, better. A sixteenth of an inch. It'll just be very delicate and and won't overwhelm our sweet little bee that we created. So we'll run our glue right along the seam here. You don't need very much, just enough to get that little strip of black to adhere. And push it along the edge as you're gluing it, push it towards there. There we go. And I can see I've got a little bit of my, I don't know if you guys can see there, I've got a little bit at the top. My white piece that I glued on there probably was not perfectly five and a half inches, so there's a little bit of overhang. So I'm just gonna run my paper trimmer right there. And I think everything else looks good. Just a little bit of overhang on this side too. Just the tiniest little bit. There we go. Take a drink of my coffee. Hmm. Still hot, guys, because it's my fancy little charger thing. That's life. That's living right there. Hot coffee that stays hot. Guys, my work surface is getting yucky. It's like all, I can feel little bits of paper and it's gonna drive me bonkers. So just give me a second. I'm gonna clean it off real quick. Okay, there we go. Nice and clean. And I'm gonna bring in, I told you at the beginning, I'm gonna bring in the sentiment from the wreath building greetings from our hive. I'm gonna use the My Little Honey and actually the, the greetings from our hive would look good too. Now I'm torn. Ooh, what should I do? I think I'm gonna do the greetings from our hive on this one. <laughs> I already had the My Little Honey stamp in there, ready to go, but I've changed my mind. And that's what's fun about card making. You can change your mind as much as you want. I'm gonna get an idea of placement here, because our little bee's gonna go right there. Look how sweet. And we're gonna stamp our greetings from our hive instead of the My Little Honey here. Sorry if my head gets in the frame. I just wanna make sure this is straight for whoever's, whoever's home this ends up in. That looks pretty good. All right, just gonna run my finger over that. Got some black hybrid ink here. Probably stamp this a couple of times just to get a really nice, solid black greeting. I 
You also could heat emboss this and that would look really pretty too. Mmm, looks good. I think twice is good enough. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to my card base. Just make sure, always make sure your card is the right direction. Right guys? I'm sure I am not alone in having put a card front down on a card base upside down. It's not the end of the world, but it's an extra step you really don't need to mess with. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to be careful because I just stamped this and it is a hybrid ink so it does stay wet a little bit longer which is nice because you could add embossing powder on it but I also don't want to just like go whoosh, and run my finger through it because it might smear a little bit before it's dry. And then we'll put our little bee. And so you can see everything is focused down here on the bottom third of the card, which is very visually appealing. Now, I think I want my little bee to be kind of in line with the greetings sentiment. So it's the same curve, that same arch. Where's my tweezers? Oh, and if you, I will say, I'm going to pull from the comments that are showing up on my software. I think that pulls all the comments from, um, if the live is over on Facebook and uh, Instagram, or not Instagram. I think starting next week, I'll be able to post the live to Instagram too, guys. Exciting changes in my stuff my uh, software. I got a, a notice about an update that should allow me to do that. So we'll, we'll give that a go next week. Now I'm not going to glue down the wings at all because I want those to kind of stay free flowing right there. But I'm going to pull from the comments that I have here that I see in the live chat. So here is our finished card. Super easy. Took an hour from start to finish and a lot of jabbering from me. Uh, but really cute, fun, not like super complicated card or anything, you know, it doesn't have like 20 layers. I know I sometimes I do really complicated cards, but this is just an easy peasy little fun card. And you, this is a great layout in general for card making. Um, if you need a go-to layout, having a panel of some type of pattern or ink blending or a, a heat embossed image or a foiled image, anything over here, and then having a plain piece of um, white or colored cardstock on the other side is a, and one little strip to, to break those two pieces apart is a really easy way to make a card. Always works. I've never had this layout not work if I am looking to use it. But I think, I think this ink blending looks really nice. Makes me happy. Happy, warm, springy card. Okay, let me switch over here. Hello again. Yay. Let me see. So here's the deal, guys. 
I'm going to pick someone randomly from the comments and then you need to email me at contact at dreamcraftcreate.com. So that's my personal email. Um, if you don't know me, Dreamcraft Create is my social media handle. So it's all across social media. So you would email me at contact at dreamcraftcreate.com and you're gonna wanna include your address, your name and address. And I need to get that within 24 hours and I will send it off the card off in the mail to you and you can use it um, however you see fit. And let's see. Okay guys, I'm gonna close my eyes, scroll back and forth a couple times and then wherever my mouse lands. Ah, Yvette Olia creates. Congratulations. Yay, you're the card winner. So uh, Yvette, I actually have your address, so you don't even have to send it to me. I will get this card out in the mail to you. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you everyone for joining me. Uh, I will be back again next Tuesday at 12 noon central. So come hang out with me if you had fun. Um, and if you didn't have fun, come hang out with me anyway, because then maybe you'll have fun next week. I don't know. Probably. I think I'm pretty fun, guys. I think this is a fun life. So come hang out. We'll chat. We'll craft. And we'll make another card. And maybe next week I'll be picking you to send that card to. I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week. And I'll see you then.